test game. Shortly after dinner, I received information from the porter of a long-distance telephone call from a Mr. Zoschenko. I was uh, somewhat irritated at having to leave my guest, more so since Mr. Zoschenko proved to be very drunk. <laughs> I came readily to this conclusion because he insisted on quoting large extracts from Plato interspersed with what I took to be the uh, Declaration of American Independence. It was all rather confusing. Then he said quite clearly, Master, you know me as Niels Smith, but I'm not. My real name is Paul Zoschenko. And then the blessed pips were. And uh, he said, No more money, Master. I'll see you for breakfast if I don't get wet on the way. Master's expecting me. Do you know where I can find him? Sir Geoffrey is expecting Dr. Audley. Would you care to join him in the chapel? Thanks. Hello, Hob. Ah, David. <laughs> nice of you to come down, my boy. I'm just trying to assess the cost of restoration. Back in uh, 1639, the college expelled a young gentleman by the name of Bradshaw. Deuteronomy Bradshaw. Unfortunately, instead of immigrating to the Americas, as uh, most dropouts did in those days, he returned at the end of the Civil War the head of a company of soldiers, and they try to use our east window for target practice. Musket in hand, I rattled down Popish Edward's glassy bow. Yes, of course, you know the story. Mm. Yeah, I'm afraid it's going to be a rather expensive job today. Mm. We certainly harbored a viper in our bosom in the person of Mr. Deuteronomy Bradshaw. And in Neil Smith? Ah. I think I'll just lock the door. 
Not much to see. No, not much, sir. Nobody heard anything? No, sir, no. Oh, Mr. Catchpole, he's near us. Well, he's half deaf, and he had his television on board. Catchpole. Has there ever been an accident here before? About ten years ago, sir, bus going too fast. We went into the pond, but then the council put up the fence and the sign. You can't miss it, you know. I wouldn't say it was dangerous myself. A well, young motorcyclist found it so. If he came down there and went through here, I reckon he didn't even try to turn. No, sir, there's no brake mark, no skid marks. Oh, if he had been attempting to turn, I wouldn't have expected him to find him where he did. If you ask me, sir... I am, Constable. Then I'd say he made no attempt to turn. Of course, he could have been riding like a maniac. I do, he'd had a skin full. Yes, she was a brilliant student. He would have gone a long way. Alas. And you never suspected uh, he might have been Russian before this? Well, I didn't surprise him seeing a red flag, if that's what you mean. No, 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 he was a jolly chappy, uh, an approachable sort of chappy. Yeah, now you think he might have been involved in some plot? Mm. For a long time now, I've had to keep my own counsel, but I have watched and taken note. You know, Hob, I hardly think the Russians would bother themselves with student unrest. They've got too much of their own. Yes, I understand what you mean, David. But you have, as usual, completely missed my point. Which is this. If you examine the university records, you will find that far too many of our more promising students have been discredited recently. For some reason or other, uh, possessing LSD, petty thieving, assaulting police officers, that sort of And a conviction quashes any chances of a sparkling career. The point that I'm trying to make, David, is this. There have been far too many of these incidents recently. Far too many for coincidence. Until recently, it was confined to the male students. But now I understand it, it, it it's uh, happening in the women's colleges. Oh, yes, I think I know the nature of the beast better than some. A dozen or so wayward students doesn't signify very much, must it? A dozen or so of tomorrow's leading men and women. And the finest minds, don't forget. Eliminated from the running. <laughs> oh, come now, David. I, I think that's a pretty fair return from a minimum monthly. It's far better than expensive spying systems, uh, pinching petty secrets which are out of date by the time we get them back to Moscow. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a, a long-term investment. You pinpoint your best minds, the coming men, and make sure that they never arrive. Get wet. Could he have been referring to Spets for 13, do you suppose? Macri Dello. Department of Wet Affairs. Wet meaning blood sodden, or just uh, wet meaning pond. Suicide or assassination? We may never know. The official verdict, of course, will be accidental death. And the master thinks it's a plot, does he? Oh, the old boy's had a bean, he's won it for years. Oh, that says maybe. He may just have buttoned onto something this time. How did this Smith or Jenko, or whatever his name is, get into the university in the first place? Oh, the usual route. Ucker, excellent school references in New Zealand, and a uh, keen brain which validated his credentials. Nobody in universities bothers much about a man's origins. They're only interested in his potential. Well, damn it all, man. This is Britain. Quite. Plot or no plot, it's got the makings of a fair old scandal if the press get hold of it. Can you imagine? Hmm. And from such a scandal, one might expect a fierce backlash. Indeed. What price your academic freedom then? It's the IRA tactics all over again. If your enemy isn't repressive by nature, 
make him so by provocation. If that is their game, why haven't they blown the gaff already? No. There must be more to it than that. But what? I don't know, David. I don't know. I want you to find out. You're pretty sharpish. I want you to do some digging in Smith's prep school. You must have kept records. Get anything you can. Why not special branch? A special branch is not in on this, and I want it to stay that way. Don't contact the head. Don't even contact the caretaker if you can help it. Right. Oh, and Nick, uh, drop everything else. Get onto this immediately. Sir. I think you'd better come inside, Commander Hannah. has its charm. It's an amazing collection. How can I help you, Commander? Information, sir. Someone who was once a pupil of yours. I'm afraid there have been rather a lot of pupils over a great many years. Smith. Neil Smith. I wonder if you realize how many Smiths I was struck with Latin grammar in half a century, Commander. You taught him from 1967 to 1972, sir. His, uh, his parents emigrated to New Zealand. Dark-haired boy, rather stocky. Good brain, beta plus rather than alpha. Smith N.H. Won an exhibition to Kings in English. I recall being rather surprised. It wasn't his strongest subject. He was awarded a first. Eh? Oh, was he indeed? Interesting. I'd have thought him a safe second, and there's nothing further from first than that. Uh, he must have been a late developer. Uh, what is it you wish to know? Everything you can remember, sir. No matter how trivial. Well, there's much I can tell you about him. You see, my memory, good though it is, revolves around uh, classroom attainment. I hardly knew the boys as people. But I can tell you where to look. You've uh, seen the school, I take it. Sir, well, quite apart from the fact that the school is closed for the holidays, I really have no wish to involve anyone other than yourself. I wasn't about to suggest you should. I doubt if there's even a caretaker there at this moment. If you walk for a quarter of a mile further along the road, you will come to a small post box. The shortcut through the woods will take you to the rear of the headmaster's garden. The hundred-yard dash up the path takes you to a door in the wall of the school. The lock on the door rusted long ago. <laughs> yes, it's an audacious route by which many a young lad has proved his daring. I fancy the danger of being seen from the house is more imaginary than real. Go through and you'll find yourself in the yard at the back of the school. Beneath the square bay, you will see a small window painted white. I am reliably informed that uh, the ventilator lifts out quite easily, providing an aperture through which you simply slide your arm and lift the catch. is an ideal size for boys, but uh, I dare say you'll squeeze through. You'll find yourself in the boys' changing room. I'm sure you can recollect the persistent smell of boys' bodies from your old school days. A short corridor will lead you to the back stairs beside the Boat's window. Continue up to the very top. But, uh, Commander, do leave things you found them. I deplore the breaking of traditions. And I've no doubt several young fellows are counting upon things being as they were.
Do we have a Bradshaw? A what? A timetable. Train timetable. You'd know better than me. I have to go back to Oxford. Oh. You look as though you've got a problem. I don't know what's going on. They're up to something. And I don't know what. Makes me feel tense. I don't like the feeling. What have you been doing? Indulging. if I join you. My pleasure.
Faith. Mm-hmm. You've got one or two contacts at Oxford. One or two? Mostly be a bit rusty through lack of use there now. Why? Just thought it might be easier for you to go sniffing around the women's colleges than me. You want me to help you? Hmm. Because if you don't think you can manage it. I've got no authority. No. Just have to use your feminine wiles, won't you? You are a bastard, David. holiday you can start planning now just by doing this it's never been easier to book your place in the sun holiday ads on TV make the choosing easy select the channel select the holiday then fill in the coupon in the TV times or ring HTV reply line on either of these numbers couldn't be easier could it happy holidays
105, the shine that smiles. This is the very best of Neil Diamond. Two new albums of all his biggest hits. Buy one, get one free. Thirty-two great tracks from one of the world's most celebrated singer-songwriters. The very best music, the very best of Neil Diamond. Two amazing albums for the price of one from KTEL. The old iron graveyard is the one place the new Rowenta Tapmaster iron has no intention of going. That's why it's got extra steam, just when you need it. That's why it can use water straight from the tap. And that's why it's got a see-through water tank, so you can tell how full it is. The new Rowenta Tapmaster irons. Rowenta leaves the rest behind. Davenport, isn't it? Yeah. Up for membership. Yes, that's right. You know, your father, he was a pipe man. Generous chap, as I recall. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you care to... Gold block, eh? <laughs> my word. Do you think there'll be any problem with my membership? None at all at this rate, old chap. None at all. Gold block. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And there was nothing on him at all? Apparently not. No name, no address. Nobody's lost him, nobody's claimed him. No prints, no mugshots on record. As far as we're concerned, he doesn't exist. Uh, rather points to him being one of theirs, wouldn't you say? I would imagine this fellow had a watching brief at Eden Hall. And instructions to act only if we showed an interest? Well, they wouldn't want to draw our attention to the place. Mm. Oh, Nick, you did a good job. I rather thought I copped it up, sir. Not at all. Not at all. Come on in. Just a bit too sharp, that's all. Made him put his foot down on the pedal a bit hard. I had a few minutes to look through those records before it all started to happen, and frankly, I can't see why anyone should be interested in Neil Smith's progress in Latin or his measles. Well, while you've been down at Eden Hall, we've had the Kiwis run a search on Neil H. Smith. Auckland could trace no family. There's nothing of this man. They did mention a boy, Neil H. Smith, gave an address as Portoruru, North Island. It's the same address our Neil H. Smith gave. What's the mystery? Surely it's the same person. Hardly. This boy died in Portoruru. Uh -oh. You're interested in history, Nick? History, yes, to a certain extent. Good. There's this chap by the name of Butler, Colonel Butler. We thought you might like to impersonate him. He spent quite a bit of time abroad. Oh, Nick, do stop doing that. There's nothing more guaranteed to set my nerves at Twitter. I'm sorry, sir. He's an archaeologist. Amateur. Made quite a name for himself as an authority on latter-day Roman military matters. I know absolutely nothing about latter-day Roman military matters. Well, he's written quite a few papers. Bone up on him, old boy. Shouldn't take you long. So, what do you say? Well, I don't... I'm, if you think I'm the right man... So. That's what I like to hear. Spirit of the Light Brigade, there's the enemy, forward we go. So many chaps nowadays are afraid to take on anything outside their own line. Tomorrow night's the quinquennial John Ward Lecture at the Institute of uh, Archaeology in Gordon Square. Colonel Butler would be there, so he'd like you to be there. Oh, you'll be in uniform. Uh, not good form, but it'll help us if you make a bit of a show. You might get yourself invited up to the study centre for uh, Cumbria University at uh, Castle Shields. Would you just mind telling me what I'm supposed to be doing? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's all done for you. Just sit back and enjoy the lecture, Colonel. Which explains, I submit, the increased unrest in the region. Why so many of the old hill forts were reoccupied? It's these native sites, my friends, which hold the key. So let us, for a while at least, forget the problems of the fort and its garrison. Get away from Letitia Dignitatum and turn our attention to the real problem, 
the more humble sight of the native population. Jones, what a very great pleasure. I, uh, most interesting paper. I uh, agree with every word. Splendid. <laughs> ah, ho Hookham, uh, do you know Colonel Butler? Uh, Professor Hookham, society president. Uh, and this is Morley, Colonel oh, Butler, Sir Arthur Gort, uh, Dr. Graham, uh, Butler's the Belisarius chap. You remember his last book? <laughs> oh, and uh, Miss Sidgwick, Colonel Butler. Hello. Charles, uh, come and meet Colonel Butler. Colonel, if you're planning a descent on the wall, then Charles Epton's the man for you. Runs the Castle Shield Study Centre. Perhaps he could put you up for your stay there. Well, you, you, you can find him a bed, Charles. Must be a corner in that place of yours. I imagine he's used to roughing it. Oh, no, really, I, I couldn't possibly <laughs> impose. I mean. Oh, let, let him earn his keep. A lecture on Belisarius' siege train in exchange for bed and board. <laughs> Fair enough, I should have thought. It will be a pleasure to have you with us, Colonel. Stay as long as you like and pay no attention to slander. Now the university pays the bills, our guest rooms leave little to be desired, as Hanforth Jones well knows. <laughs> we can bag some of the local game, I may even lay on a special feast. I warn you, my guests frequently have to serve as guinea pigs for my culinary experiments. Well, I shall be very honest. I, I, I think he's trying to attract your attention. Well, ah, delighted you could come, Butler. Uh, should we compare notes when we meet again? That'd be a pleasure, sir. Mr. Epton, uh, I dare say I shall see you at Castle Shields. Will you excuse me, gentlemen? Certainly. Good night. Good night. <laughs> H.J., get you invited up to Castle Shields? Funny you should say that, yes. But why and for what? That's what I should like to know. There have been Eptons at Castle Shields for 500 years, but the last few generations have produced a somewhat radical streak. Rather a long way left of centre. Guy Burgess, Philby, Blunt, all stayed there. Epton himself was uh, once a member of the Apostles. You think he may still be red? He's checked out pretty regularly, and uh, so far there have been no stains, but of course, one can never really tell. So you want me to double-check? Keep a wary eye on him. But I'd really like you to mingle with the students. You'll enjoy that. They're rather a bright lot. Only the cream get invited up there. Oh, I think I see. You think if the Russians want to cause trouble among the students, Castle Shields is a prime target? If that's their game. Neil Smith stayed there. He struck up a relationship with Epton's daughter, Polly. Yes, well, I just don't see how you expect me to pass myself off as some archaeological expert among a lot of exceptionally bright students, not to mention professors. They expect me to give a lecture on Belisarius' siege train, for God's sake. You better memorize Butler's book. You'll have plenty of time. 
I'd like you to walk the wall. I beg your pardon? Hadrian's wall. I'd like you to walk the length of it. It should take a couple of days. A couple of days? And what is the point in that? To study the rotation of cohorts. you were coming yesterday. Sidetracked, I'm afraid. Spot a bother? No. Just confusion, really. Uh-huh. They say my leg's on the mend, all right. But it was a near thing. No doubt you'll be uh, hobbling about soon. Oh, I've been up and down the corridors a few times already. Good. That's very encouraging. Because I need you back. What? Then you can rely on a hard to find. You got Nick Hanna? Busy. I'm a cripple man. I've even had to send my wife out investigating. Faith? She's a bright girl, but I'd really feel better if there was someone keeping an eye on her. Discreetly, of course. Here you are. Hello, Hugh. How are you? Better for seeing you. It's fine. Flying a bed, eating grapes, leading the life of Riley. I'm meant to be resting, and he's already succeeded in raising my blood pressure. He does have that unfortunate habit. Here, have one. Mm. There aren't many left. Yes, I heard you two got on rather well together. Unfortunately, I have to drag you away, my dear. Do what? You've got the car. I spent 15 minutes trying to get a parking space, and now he wants to drag me away. I'm sure you'll be seeing each other. Sometime soon. How did you make out? Quite well. I've got Jean Sherman to help. Is she? She runs some Gregory's. Would I know her if uh, we meet in adversity? Oh, you've met her once or twice at parties, apparently. I think she knows more about you than I do. Mm -hmm. What's your plan? Well, when I get to Oxford, I shall be introduced into the student set up ostensibly to help with grants and personal problems. I think there's a possible lead. A girl called Abigail West. She's rather brilliant, I gather, but something's starting to go wrong. They don't know where she is at the moment. No time to waste, then. Tell me about this uh, Banbury Road lady. Her name's Jean Sherman. There's no need to divulge unnecessarily. David, I may not be Marta Hari, but I'm not a complete fool. Uh, drop me here, would you? Where are you going? Uh, other business. Oh. Not even going to kiss me goodbye? I'll see you tomorrow night at the Winston. Audley, give me security, would you? Claire, could you do me a quick G17, please, on uh, one Jean Sherman? Currently at St. Gregory's College, Oxford. Yep. I'll be at RV3 in an hour. Ciao. How pleasant to revive old friendships. You look so young, so chic. You make me feel terribly grey. 
Jean, you haven't changed a bit. You must tell me all the intimate secrets of life with David Audley. I shouldn't think they'd interest you much. Oh, I don't know. I must say, we were all agog when we heard of the marriage. What can the poor child be thinking of, I said to myself. Jean. Was it the blue eyes that did it? The mean look? <laughs> the spelt hips? <laughs> Not going to tell you a thing if you go on like that. You always did have a partial for older men. You gonna help me or not? Of course, my dear. But you are asking rather a lot. I know. And I'm probably contrite. But you're asking just the same. It's just that David can be such a pig sometimes. I want to prove to him that I can handle something important. Oh, well, in that case, I'll just have to see what I can do. But you must forgive me if I don't take it too seriously. Why? I've explained. I can hardly give Hobson's theories any credence, whatever your husband might think. Old Hobbs been seeing reds under the bed since I was at high school. That's her, Abigail West. But don't let anyone see you've got it, or they'll want to know where it came from. I won't. Jean, I do appreciate this. Well, I hope you prove your point. Time to stop. Mr. Masters wants to see you immediately. Headache. Now stop that headache building up. New Salmin. Fast, effective relief when you need it. Salmin dispersed pleasantly in the mouth without water, so they can be taken anywhere. Remember, don't carry a headache around. Carry Salmin. They make your brain shake. They make policemen quake. They make a noise. You golden one, new golden one to Christmas. Now with more than anyone thought possible. And there's lots of the little devils. When you open this pack, they just gotta step back. Everybody knows ears are under attack from the luxiest crisps. New golden wonder. Rescued by the Russians. And just in time for dinner, sir. <laughs> I don't know about Russia, Captain, but after dinner, my wife and I generally enjoy a glass of port. Cook burns. Not quite. It's Coburn's, actually. No, we don't pronounce the C-K. Coburn's. So that is a clue? No, that's a clock. So. Sock. Coburn's Special Reserve. A very fine bottle of port. So I come from Moscow. Yes, I think you probably do. Take away a taste of India to enjoy at your home. From the standard tandoori restaurants, Cowbridge Road, Cardiff, 
and Broad Street, Barry. Stock clearance sale. Half price louver doors, half price cornice poles. Handyland, Penarth Road, Cardiff, and Mill Parade, Newport. I was hoping to find Abigail West. I believe she does live here, doesn't she? Yes. She's not here now. I just wanted to find out if I... I will ask your name. Yes, it's Fenwick. I'm from the college. What is it that you wanted? Well, we're really rather concerned about Abigail. She hasn't been seen around and she's missed some of her tutorials. Well, she's not here. There's no doubt you can see. Yes. Do you think she'll be coming back? <laughs> I wonder. We really are rather concerned about her, actually. You're nervous, aren't you? You're afraid. Why are you afraid? I'm not. It's feeling a bit aggravated running around looking for her everywhere. You know how it is. Would you like to sit down and wait? Angel, can you find a chair? No, thank you very much. No, I'm fine. I'm a bit pushed. I've got to dash. Perhaps I should try her parents. Yes, that's a good idea. Yes, we'll have her address on file. Angel, open the door for Miss Fennick. Mrs. Fennick. I think she wants to go. Yes, if you'll excuse me. You do have Abigail's permission to be here, do you? But of course. Abigail asks us to keep an eye on the place for her. We're her friends. Hugh! What are you doing here? Hello, Faith. You've been following me, haven't you? Well, um... Whose idea was this? Yours or David's? David's, actually. I might have known. He sent you as nursemaid, huh? It shows he cares, doesn't it? Does it? I just thought I should keep an eye on you. Will you tell him from me that I can do very well without a peg-legged invalid hobbling around after me? Oh. So thank you very much, you. I love you dearly. Now get lost. Miss Epton? Uncle Jeff said he wanted to talk to me about Neil. You've got the Arab chair at Cumbria, haven't you? I always seem to have missed you when I've been staying with Daddy at Castle Shields. Well, that was obviously my loss. She was so dumb. Come and see the show. Inside tonight. It'll be quieter at the end. Okay. In the corner? Sure. Sorry about the hole in the corner bit. I did want to ask you some questions. And it's only answers. No questions from me. For the moment. I think Neil would have looked on me as a friend and given me the answers. If he'd been here. <laughs> did you ever meet him? He was so nice. More fun to be with than anyone I know. Everyone liked him. Because... Because there was no pretense about him. He could be secretive in a way. Yet, even that was curiously open.
he was vulnerable. In some way, I never understood. I wish I had. Understood, I mean. I don't want to distress you, Miss Epton. Polly! Oh, hello, Dan. Uh, Dr. Audley, this is Dan McLaughlin, a friend. I'm sorry, will you excuse me? I think I'm in the chair. Oh, super, thanks. Speaking of being in the chair, are you, um, the... Hmm. I guess you're a friend of the family. Poor old Polly. I thought it would hit her sooner or later. It? Hmm. Old Neil running out of road. Did you know him, sir? Was he a friend of yours? Yes, yeah, sort of. He wasn't my year, but I was at prep school with him years ago. Eden Hall? Yes, do you know it? Still a different year, of course. But we had a nodding acquaintance. He was from New Zealand, I was Rhodesian. Not exactly something in common, but we talked, you know. Funny. When we met up again here at King's, I didn't even recognize him. He changed quite a bit. Really? In what way? Well, I don't know, just different. I'm sorry about that. Promise not to do it again. Cheers. If you think we can chance the bar food here, I'd be happy to buy us lunch. Well, I can do salad and cold chicken at my place. The hordes will descend in the next few minutes. I think we can talk easier elsewhere. Sounds really nice. Um, if you will excuse me, I should make a phone call. Over there, sir, behind the screen. <laughs> Dan McLaughlin. Do you know him? I see. Yeah, he says he's acquaintance of our man Smith. Ah. You're implying that um, he's also a target in this matter. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep an eye on him. Uh, thank you, Master. I'm sorry to disturb you. Ladies and gentlemen, roll it, roll it, roll it. Tonight, tonight, yes, don't miss the show. You better sit in the back, sir. Not so comfortable, perhaps, but a lot less dangerous. Dan McLaughlin, that's a rotten lie. I've never hit anything in my life. You drive too fast, my girl. One of these days you will. Where are we going exactly? Polly's cottage at Milford, not all that far. to this Castle Shields place, Dan? I've been a couple of times. The layout's a pretty good lecture. It's good. And it's all free, so they don't have to twist anyone's arm to help with the digging. On the archaeological size, that is, sir. Easy, girl. <laughs> uh, no need to hurry on my account, Miss Hampton. Castle Shields, quite frankly, sir, is a well-appointed, isolated prison for the likely lads. Our lords and masters aren't too happy with us earning an honest penny during the vac. Frighten me might be polluted by commerce, I imagine. Slow! Slow! <laughs> Hold it! I'll kill that bastard! Get on! Ah! Got an air rifle, that's 22. Polly! 